I used to think that map functions are really hard to understand and that they are not worth the effort to learn them. But now that I understand them, I realize that they are a really powerful tool to iterate over a common task and run, for example, multiple analyses all in one go. So that's pretty neat and compared to for loops that do the exact same thing, they allow for a much conciser code and a much smoother workflow. So today I'm going to demystify how map functions work. Let's check that out. In my quarter file, I've prepared a short example for you that will highlight how useful map functions are. For that, let's execute this first code chunk and then let's have a look at the data set that we have, which is data related to life expectancies of different countries on different continents. And it comes out of the Gapminder package and I've just cleaned up the column names a little bit so that they are nicer. Now, what we could do with that is to inspect the life expectancy over time for different continents. And for that, I have created a code chunk. And if I run it, we don't have to worry about the code for now. Then we see a chart like this that shows you the trend of how the life expectancy evolved over time. As expected, the life expectancy got larger as all of the lines go up. And also you can see that Africa has the lowest life expectancy and Oceania and Europe having the largest life expectancy. If you're curious, you can have a look at the code here, but it really doesn't matter too much. It's just taking this data set, throwing it to ggplot, plotting the points with gm jitter, and then applying gm smooth to get the lines and then some nice labels and a bit of a nicer theme. The important thing here is that the method that we used to generate the lines was LM to generate linear models. And if we were not doing that, then you'd see that we wouldn't have straight lines. But I'm doing that here because I want to highlight how you could run such a calculation that must be going on in the background here yourself using the map functions. You see, it's super easy to get a chart like this with ggplot. But if you want to get the hard numbers of what are the slopes of these lines here or what's the intercept, what's the linear model behind this, then you will have to run the calculations eventually and the map functions help you do that. And now we can take our data set and I'll show you how to run the calculations without having to use a for loop. So if we take a look at our data set, let me minimize the chart here for a second and then we can pass this to the nest function and then use the by argument to nest this by continent. As you probably recall from just a second ago, we have a line for every continent and we want to therefore have a linear model for every continent. And with the nest function, you can easily nest this thing. And then if you want to run a linear regression using each data set in each row, then you can pass this to mutate. And then you could calculate a new column called linear models or linmod. That's how I want to call it. And then we use the map function to iterate over all the entries that are inside of our data column. You see, what we want to do is to take each row in this data set and use the data set that is nested inside of the data column and then stick this data set into the function that calculates the linear models. And in R, that is the LM function. And to tell this LM function what data we want to use, we define a custom function using the shorthand notation to define function. And then we use the LM function where we describe the life expectancy by the year. And we tell that LM function that the data will always be the argument that we stick into this function. So if you execute this, you'll see that you get a new column and it is a list like column, just like the data was before. And you see here that in there, there are always linear models in there. So what we could do is just pass this to slice and grab the first row. And then let's have a look at what is inside the lin mod. And if we do that, we see here that this is just a typical output of the linear model. So we see here we have fitted a linear model for the Asian data, because this is the continent we're currently looking at, where the linear model has an intercept of minus 836 and a year coefficient of 0.45. So that's how you can see that this really did what we wanted to do. So if we get rid of this part here, you see now that this iterated over all of the rows. So really this map function just replaces for loops so that you can do everything using these kind of lists that can have whole data sets inside of them. We'll get back to this example in a second, but just to really bring home the point, let's just go to a really simple example. 
let's just use the map function using vectors, namely a vector that just contains the numbers one through five. So in this vector, there's just the numbers one through five. And now we could iterate over these entries using a custom function. And this time the custom function should not do something as serious as creating a linear model. So nothing too involved. Instead, we just want to calculate the square of the number. So now what you see here is that we have calculated the squares of the numbers one through five. Of course, it would be ridiculous to calculate square numbers that way, because in R, you could just take the vector one through five and then square it. But I'm doing this here to show you the idea of the map function. Really what this does is that it just takes the arguments that you give it and then sticks it into the function that you pass to it one by one. It's nothing but a for loop, but in a really concise syntax. But this concise syntax is also really powerful. You could, for example, say you don't only want to have the squares, but you also want to have the cubes. Once again, this kind of example isn't really something you'd encounter in a data, data setting. You rarely want to calculate just squares and cubes, but it's easy to explain the map functions that way. In any case, if you execute this, you'll see that you now have not only the squares, but also the cubes of the number that you stick into this function. So really with this function, you can calculate anything. It will just stick all of the results into a list and then you have all of that combined together. So this is also what happened in our data example. You see, the output of that is just a list that contains complex objects. In our dumb example here, the complex object were just vectors of length too. But our real example with data shows you the power it can have to have arbitrary objects inside of a data set or inside of a column of a data set. And this ridiculous example of having an as an output vectors of length two isn't too far fetched from reality after all. For example, if we go into our data example, then we could apply the coefficients function on the linear models we have inside of our new column here. So if we were to calculate a new column, let's call it coefs, and we want to calculate this column by extracting all of the coefficients from the linear models that we have calculated. In that case, we can once again use the map function and tell this map function now we don't iterate over the data column, but we want to iterate over this new linear models column. And what shall it do? Well, it should just use the following function, just use the coefficients function. So whatever this function gets, will go into the coefficients function. And then if we execute this, we see now that our output has a new column with the name that we specified, and it is a list of double vectors of length two. But our syntax here was a bit unnecessarily verbose. If we just want to use the coefficients function as is, meaning that whatever we want to use to iterate over, if we just stick this thing into the function that we want to use as the first argument, we can just get rid of this extra function wrapper and just use the name as is, and the result will be the exact same thing. Basically, we're just telling this map function, hey, use this linear models, all of these things, and stick it into this function. And because this function already has a name, we can just refer to the name. In the previous example, this custom function didn't have a name, so we couldn't refer to the name. Instead, we just gave this function as is. Cool, we now have the coefficients, but really I'm interested in the number. I don't care that there are two. I want to see both the slope and the intercept. So let's calculate these things. Let's start with the slope and use the map function once again to get the second entry from each of those vectors of length two. So let's iterate over the coefs column. And in there, we just take what we get and we extract the second thing from it. And now if we execute this, we see that, okay, now we have a vector of length one in each cell of the slope column. That's nice, but I really want to see the number. And the cool thing with the map functions is that you don't have to think about it too much. When you know that your output is a double of length one, then you can tell the map functions to skip the step of putting everything into a list, just stick this into a good old vector. And in this case, it will be double vector. So this is why we specify this double with the underscore double function. And now if we execute this, we notice that we actually get the slope. You could also use this for other output. For example, for character output, you could use the map character function. And then you'd see that this was translated to a character, but it also tells you that automatic coercion is not something you kind of want to have. 
So this is why I'll revert these changes and we'll go back to map double. But I hope you get the idea that if you want to have a specific output and the function that you use to iterate over the arguments that you specify, if that function returns something that is of length one, then you can use one of these map underscore function to specify that you don't want to have a list as an output, but just a simple vector. So we can do the exact same thing with the intercept. So let's use map double and iterate over the coefficients column. And there we want to always extract the first argument. And that way we do get the intercepts. And because it is so common that people want to extract specific elements from a vector, there is actually a shorthand for these map functions, namely you can just specify the numbers of the elements that you want to extract. So if we were to execute this part here, you see that we get the exact same result. You can use this, but for the sake of this video, I do want to stick to this notation to really highlight that it is functions that we want to stick into the second argument of the map function. Nice, so we have calculated all the linear models extracted all of the coefficients and really extracted from that the slope and intercept that we want to see. So basically coming back to the first chart that we have seen, we have calculated the underlying data from this chart. And the nice thing about this approach using the map functions instead of for loops is that we have all of this in one place. Think about it, with one pipe chain, you have now calculated a linear model for all of the subsets in your data that you want to look at. So this is a really powerful technique to run data analysis and I cannot stress enough how powerful this map function is. And if you ever need to iterate over a function that needs more than one argument, you can just use one of the other map functions. The nice thing about the map functions is that their naming makes sense. So if you need to iterate over two arguments, you can use the map two functions. As you can see for all of those, you also have these other special cases where if you want to have characters or doubles or integers or logicals, for all of these cases, the map two functions is available as well. And the idea of this function is the exact same thing. The first two arguments are the things you want to iterate over. Let's just say we want to iterate over the numbers two through six. And then we of course also need a function that takes two arguments. So let's define a function that has arguments X and Y and we'll just calculate the sum of x and y here. So once again, just a simple example to show you the idea of how map functions work. And here you see that once again, we do get the sum of the numbers that we have here. So this is the sum of one and two, this is the sum of two and three, this is the sum of three and four and so on. And just to show you that the conversion into vectors works as well, let's just throw an underscore double in there. And here we have a nice output. And if you ever need more than two arguments, there's the pmap function. But that's a story for some other time. For now, I'll leave you with map and map two. If you enjoyed this video, I am very certain that you're going to enjoy my data cleaning masterclass because in the last part of this video course, I focus on functional programming, which includes all of the cool tricks that you can do with the powerful map functions. So if you want to level up your data cleaning skills, you can follow this link here. And if you're interested in some of my other videos, you can check out this playlist here.